Today I'd like to show you something I've been waiting for for a few months. This is the Gamorrean Fighter concept maquette replica from Regal Robot. Now, what is a concept maquette? Well, in the course of making a TV show or a movie, they will sometimes want to see what a certain character design looks like in three dimensions, and they'll make what's called a maquette or a small statue just to help them visualize whether it's working, what it looks like, and so forth. Uh, and that's what this is here. This is a replica of an actual maquette that was used in the production of the Mandalorian TV show. And this is kind of a famous one in the sense that at the end of season one of The Mandalorian, John Favreau, the showrunner, put on social media a picture of this maquette as kind of a, I guess, a, a taster, a teaser for what was coming in season two. And of course, there was a lot of speculation at that point from me as well <laughs> as other people uh, about what that really would mean, what role a Gamorrean guard might have in the show. And you know, in some ways, I think we underestimated how important this was going to be. If you've seen the show the set in the second season, uh, you'll know that the actual design that they ended up using was a little bit different from what they have here in the maquette. Uh, it was a lot closer to what we saw in Return of the Jedi, the sort of the traditional Gamorrean Guard design, whereas what we see in the maquette is more like a grizzled pit fighter or a wrestler, maybe even a boxer, who has, uh, you know, really kind of <laughs> gone through the ringer, but also is very, very tough. So he's got uh, some battle damage, I guess you'd say, scars on his face and his body. He's got one horns broken off and one ear appears to have been ripped off or bitten off or something. Uh, and he looks... Well, really intimidating, actually, which I think is a cool aspect of this. If you compare this design to the design from Return of the Jedi, I would say uh, the traditional Gamorrean guards are a little bit more on the comical side. You know, they're a little bit kind of, well, they look like they're kind of dumpy and out of shape a little bit. And, uh, you know, they, they kind of waddle around, whereas this guy looks like he would be able to rip your arms off without even thinking twice about it. Definitely a little bit more of a intimidating take on the on the character, and for that reason, I'm a little disappointed that they didn't go with this in the the final show. I think uh, they did a great job replicating the original maquette, although I haven't seen super detailed photos of that to be able to compare really. But uh, you know, from what my my impression anyway is that uh, you know it's a little bit on the quick and dirty side. It's not super detailed in terms of the paint job, but it's also well done. So you've got well-placed uh, accent colors and so forth. Everything is clean, well done, but not super detailed, not a lot of uh, different colors used in the shading and so forth that you might see with, uh, you know, a sort of a normal collectible statue. So if you're interested in this, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. What you are actually buying is not so much a statue as it is a replica, almost a prop re replica in that sense. These uh, come with, as you can see here, a little uh, plaque that shows the number of your individual piece. Mine is 85. I almost got 83 there, which would have been kind of cool. But honestly, I'm not the kind of person who cares a lot about numbering. You also get this little uh, pamphlet, I guess you'd say, almost a certificate of authenticity, although I don't think it actually says that anywhere. It's got uh, the signature of Tom Spina, who is the founder of Regal Robot, and a little bit of information about the piece. It says, uh, your solid polyresin statue was cast and individually hand-painted in the USA and includes a hand-numbered plaque. It also mentions, and this is something that I wanted to mention as well, use the included screws to attach figure to base. Well, it actually only came with one screw, but uh, it's something to keep in mind. When I got this, it was, it had this uh, screw here sticking out of the bottom of his foot, and then this was packed separately, the base was separate. It's got a hole here that's countersunk and everything, so it's it's nicely done, but you do need a screwdriver 
to, uh, first of all, take out probably this screw and then to put it back in. It's a, a little bit of a tight fit. And if you're not a little bit careful, I could imagine someone possibly causing a little damage. So you do need to watch it, but it's not like it's difficult to screw in a screw. These go for uh, $499 on the Regal Robot website, and they're limited to just 250 pieces, which is actually quite limited for something of this nature. Uh, I mean, Regal Robot pieces tend to be quite limited in general, and they're all, as it said on the certificate, hand-painted and cast in the U.S., which does tend to uh, increase the price and so forth. It seems like they're kind of making these maybe... Uh, as people order them. I ordered mine a while back. I don't remember exactly when, but it's been a few months. And uh, it sounded, from what I've been able to tell, you know, seeing on social media and so forth, that some people maybe who ordered right away when they were first available did get theirs maybe a month or two ago, and now I'm getting mine. So, you know, if you were to order now, I imagine it might take a little while to, to get yours in hand. So this is 12 and a quarter inches tall when it's on the base. But, uh, you know, without the base, I imagine it would be roughly 12 inches tall. So I'm uh, roughly one-sixth scale, I think, here. So if you are interested, uh, I would go ahead and check out the Regal Robot website, which I do have in the video description. And uh, that's about it for today. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. As usual, this video was brought to you with the help of my patrons, including these Palace VIPs and Angelica Brady, you can support me for as little as a dollar a month, and that gets you a number of cool perks like early access to my videos and the ability to chat with me and other Java fans on the Patreon site, as well as get some behind-the-scenes posts about things that I'm working on. Check out the link in the video description if you're interested. See you next time!